I'm holding a compound arrow that was made by the Sun people of Botswana. For several thousand years, this design was one of the top hunting technologies on the entire planet. Tipped with a clever poison, it can bring down game as large as a giraffe. You know what this arrow is? It's the original killer app. The San have the distinction of being one of the world's more affluent societies for a good part of human history. On a work week of 15 hours, they feed, clothe, and house themselves. Their culture has some strong norms, including fierce equality and demand sharing. Fierce equality means they have no leaders, no followers. Demand sharing means that what any one of them catches, gathers, or crafts is available to be shared by others through a culturally mediated practice that ensures that everyone's needs are met. They also keep their own needs simple and easily met. And they have acquired an abundance of knowledge about the resources available to them in their surrounding environment. I'm a cultural anthropologist and an online community architect. I work with hundreds of earth scientists building cultural practices for them to share their data. I came to Dent four years ago. In that week at that conference, I learned more about intentional organizational culture than I had during years of grad school. The message I heard at Dent was clear. Ignore your culture and it will turn toxic on you. Fuck up your culture and it will murder your dreams. I'm up here now because science, indeed, the whole academy, is in trouble today. Really bad trouble. See, science has been ignoring its culture for about 350 years now. And today, science is powered by a toxic mix of perverse incentives. And a toxic science culture can murder all of our dreams. I don't want to list all the ways that science is broken today. I only have five minutes. I can say that scientists spend far too much time hunting for resources and way too much effort chasing incentives that they know are wrong for science. Science needs to relearn how to share its knowledge. And we can all agree that the time is up for science to build fierce equality into its workplace. Technology is not a solution here. There is no platform, no framework, no utility to magically make scientists fiercely equal sharers. Back in the 1940s, the sociologist Robert Merton sought to define the norms of science. His norms described a society of equals with open sharing and no property rights. Merton could well be describing classic hunter-gatherer culture. Perhaps this is why there is a really remarkable fit between the logics of fierce equality and demand sharing and the solution space for the future of science. By 1968, Merton noticed that science culture was failing. And one reason for this he described as the Matthew effect. It's where the rich get richer and the rest get tossed under the bus. A good part of the problem comes from the influence of marketplace logics based on establishing arbitrary scarcity. Today, science culture has collapsed into its own myth of prestige and what Cameron Nalen calls the bullshit idea of excellence. And so instead of a society of equals, we now have a culture that celebrates, celebrates bullshit prestige. That is why I come here today to ask for your help. There's more organizational cultural know-how in this room, I believe, than there is in the entire American Anthropological Association. Every day you work to build intentional culture into all your business enterprises. Do you really want to make a dent in the future? I ask you to bring your skill and know-how to the science enterprise. Today we can imagine a fiercely equal, open sharing future for the Academy. A future based not on the artificial scarcity of the marketplace, but on the abundance of data now being gathered. It is exciting to hold technology in your hand to think this can change the world. What Dent has shown me is that you can hold technology in your hand, but it's culture that grabs you by the heart. Thank you.